I was sitting in my car one day at the post office and I was playing some beautiful music from another country. Well, a man walks up to me and says, that music is from my country. Well, where are you from? And I said, Brooklyn. <laughs> Look, he said, but you're playing my music. And I said, yeah, I love it. I love that style. And, um, and, and he says, well, uh, wow. He says, are you a minister? Do you sing? I said, yeah, both. Guilty of both. So he says, you know, I have a church. And uh, maybe sometimes you could come and sing for us. Uh, why don't you give me your number? So we exchange numbers. And I go on and do my business at the, at the uh, post office. And I head on home. Um, he gives me a call and he, he arranges the date and everything looks really nice on the up and up pastor of a church and all. Yeah. So I go there and I sing a few times. He has me come back, you know, two or three times to sing. Then he starts offering to take me out to dinner after the service because he wants to talk about ministry. Hmm. So that's what I think we're going to talk about. And then he starts wondering why I'm not married and, and um, you know, I told him the situation and you know how that goes and one question leads to the next. And then after a while I start suspecting, well, come on now, you've asked me to sing at your church. Let's leave it at that. I didn't say that, but that's in my mind, right? But by the same token now, here's the trap Satan tries to set. I was needy in that area, so I am also eating up the compliments. You get me? <laughs> okay. Here I go, and um, he sets an appointment for me to come and preach at his church. So I said, okay, okay. We're sticking with ministry. That's cool. I get home, and one night before I go to preach at his church, I dream that this man is sitting around with a round table full of people. And this man is from the exact same country that this pastor is from. Only this man in this dream is trying to convince me to become one of his wives. Whoa, Nelly. So, <laughs> interesting, isn't it? So I wake up, well, I don't wake up yet. I'm sitting there, um, you know, poo-pooing the idea. And all of a sudden we have an earthquake. And I leaned, I looked around and said, that was a big earthquake. And one of the women, the silly women, she says, oh, that was just a volcano. <laughs> and I looked at her like she was a nut. Just the volcano? Huh. So anyway, I'm... I'm locating my keys in my pocketbook and getting ready for a quick escape because I'm like, hey, you fools can sit up here if you want, but I ain't going to be with you. And then he starts up again trying to convince me to become one of his wives. And an earthquake starts again. I said, okay, see you later. I got to go. I'm gone. I go jump in my car. I'm driving out the parking lot. And I look behind me, and in my mind, I'm saying, oh, God, let somebody else have the sense to come out of there. But because the pastor wouldn't leave, none of the people left. They stayed in there. Now, here's the trip. This is where they were located. When I looked up, the building was at the base of the volcano. Stupid, stupid, stupid. But anyway, okay, moving right along. I drive out the parking lot and I wake up. I prayed. I said, Lord, I believe that's a, a sign from you. And I ask you that as this man has me preach at his church, you would make sure that when I come out of there, I'm taking somebody with me. In Jesus' name I pray. Well, what happened? One lady from the church decides after I preach one sermon, she wants to get her hair done. So she comes to my shop and I do her hair. While I'm doing her hair, 
the Lord is nudging me. You know how somebody pushes a person into a fight? Go on, fight him, fight him. You know, I'm being nudged. Ask, ask. <laughs> this woman doesn't know me. I'm getting all in her business. Ask, ask. Excuse me. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll ask. So I said, okay, I'm going to ask you some questions, but don't be offended. The Lord is moving me to do this. And I ask these questions and, you know, and she answers them very guardedly, you know, in a very guarded manner. And then I finally said, okay, before I go any further, because I can see you're getting offended. I can see it on your face. Let me share my dream with you. When I shared my dream, that woman busted up into tongues and praising God and worship, just spontaneous worship. And I said, whoa. And after she finished, she was crying. And she said, I know God sent you. I know God sent you. And she started to share with me that the man that was pastoring and having me come sing and preach was her husband. Nobody at the church knew it. That her baby was his baby. Nobody at the church knew it. And he kept her in silence. Okay. So then the next day, I'm keeping my face straight, right? Because I, I want to let her, you know, come on, come on with it. <laughs> I don't want to do anything to shut it down. <laughs> anyway, the woman and I are close friends to this day. So, but let me tell you what happened. When she got through sharing, all of the sins and all of the adulteries and all the women in the church that he was involved with sexually. It was so, it was amazing to me because if you want to see an innocent batch of, of people, these people looked innocent. I, I mean, innocent. And they had bought into this guy's charades one woman was just his little sidekick and she knew it and she was okay with it another woman was was you know something where he slipped away in the middle of the night and they do their thing and I, it was crazy it was almost maybe 20 percent of the women there were not having sex with him bizarre so this is what happened um she and I prayed about it, and we asked the Lord to give her the courage to cut this loose, because she still loved him, even though she knew he was up to no good the whole time. And she lived in her place, and he lived in his place. Isn't that bizarre? How convenient for him. But anyway, so what ended up happening was we went to a restaurant, and we had just prayed. We were starting to form a friendship. And I had preached at that church about three times by this by this time. And we prayed that God would lead her to another church, show her exactly where he wanted her to go. We're sitting down eating, and one of the servers comes over, and he says, Oh, praise the Lord. How you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And he says, Oh, you're a Christian. He says, Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you were, too. And we said, Yeah, we are. And he said, Oh, you know what? Tomorrow, what a coincidence. Tomorrow, we're having Friendship Day. Would you guys like to come? I'd like to personally invite you to be my guest. And I looked at her and she looked at me and we were like, mm, mm, what is God up to now? So we uh, accepted and we went. She loved it. Oh, she could feel the presence. She loved it. I enjoyed it too. I mean, I'm just saying from her perspective because she was the one that needed a church home. I already had one. Well, since she had made this break and it was such a, an emotional break for her, I told her this. I said, if you decide that this is it, you bring your kids, see how they feel. If you decide this is it, whatever church you attend, I will go there with you at least for three or four months until you get well acclimated and make friends. And once you feel comfortable enough for me to back off and you feel like you're solid enough to stay, then I'll go on back to my 
to my other church, I'll explain to my pastor what I'm doing. She stayed at that church for years, divorced the man, the whole nine yards, and she's doing great. She's doing wonderfully. I, I, I had a church for a, a short time and she even preached. I mean, she had the gift. And it was just beautiful to see God all over her life and how God made a way of escape. Oh, she was victimized, she was played, but she never got bitter. She forgave and she just moved on. Beautiful woman, gifted with love. I just shared that to tell you, God will use dreams, visions, whatever, to help an unsuspecting, genuine person come out of a freakish situation that is as demonic and devilish as can be because he knows that's not where they are. They're living, they're walking right by God. They love God. He knows where his real ones are and he brought her out. Isn't that beautiful? I love the way God looks after his knuckleheads because some of us can really be knuckleheads. God bless you.